Today, I'm going to show you how to go from a boring Windows 11 fresh install to this. It may just look like I've changed the wallpaper, but there is a lot more to it. In this video, we're going to be looking at Rectify 11 and so many different tools that I use to customize my desktop. A lot of people have been asking for a customizing Windows video, so here you guys go. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys. So here we are on Windows 11, a fresh install. Now, if you followed my last video, which I'll leave on the top right right now, you will see that I made my own Notre OS Windows 11 kind of thing using a program called NT Lite. So this is pretty much what you get when you boot up on the Notro OS ISO. So we don't even have a web browser right now. If we go into all apps here, obviously I've killed Edge. So uh, nope, I don't even think we have Internet Explorer installed. So yeah, we need to go ahead and get a web browser. Now to do that, I'm just going to open up Terminal. So I'm just going to open this, run as administrator, and then we're just going to use the Winget tool to install Firefox. So if we just check, we've got Winget here. Yes, we do. Perfect. So just do winget install mozilla.firefox. That should hopefully install Firefox, which is my browser of choice. And yeah, this is pretty much what you guys will probably need to do if you install the Notro OS ISO. Just get your own web browser of choice using Winget and you should be pretty much good to go. Right, so my Firefox web browser has installed, which is good. Now, next up, if we right click on the taskbar and go to task manager here, as you can see, my processes are a little bit on the high side. We're at 121 right now, but we can fix that very easily using the Chris Titus tool. So yeah, if we go to the ultimate Windows utility, copy this and then open up PowerShell as administrator. And then if we just paste that in here, press yes, if it asks you to install chocolatey. And here we go. So I'm just going to go into the tweaks section here, go to desktop, and we're just going to remove Cortana, Microsoft apps, and we'll also disable notifications. But other than that, we can pretty much, okay, we'll also disable mouse acceleration as well. Really good to have, especially if you're a gamer. And that's pretty much it. Just go ahead and run the tweaks here. And it looks like the tool's updated since I last used it. So we'll just go ahead and we'll enable some of this stuff here. I believe you can also install net framework through this as well, which is good to do. I'm gonna put updates on security recommended settings. I don't want Windows feature updates because that will just install my bloatware back. You can install applications through here as well, which I'm personally not gonna do just yet. So once you finish doing that, just close out of it and restart your computer. Go to processes, 63 processes. I just love Chris Titus's tool. It is so good. It's pretty much just half our processes here. Even if you're on a high end PC, it's good to get your processes down. So now we've got 63 processes. We can begin installing stuff to customize our Windows experience. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the taskbar settings. Now this is all personal preference, but I'm going to turn off search. I'm actually going to put the alignment in the middle because I've actually got used to using this now and it's really kind of intuitive especially if you're a Mac user and you're used to kind of the dock down here and next up what we're going to do is we're going to customize our start menu now the Windows 11 start menu I didn't like it at first but it's kind of grown on me however we can use a third party program that will completely transform our Windows 11 start menu and take it to the next level and it's called start 11 all right so to get start 11 just go to their website I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. It is a paid software, but there is a free trial of it. But yeah, I definitely recommend getting this, seeing if you like it. And then if you do like it, definitely purchase it because it is a really, really good piece of software. Right. So to install Start 11, it's pretty easy. It's just a standard Windows installer. So very simple. Just next, next, next. Right. So once Start 11 is installed, restart your computer and yeah, we should be able to experience our new start menu. Right, so our computer has restarted. Now just open up Start 11. Uh, you need to activate your trial, start the 30-day trial. Just enter your email address and confirm that. And then it'll come up with this. So I'm going to go with Center Alliance here. And the style I'm going to go for is Windows 11. Now there's various different styles you can use. You can use a Windows 7 style one, which looks like this. It looks pretty cool. If you're into like Windows 7 and just, you know, the way it's all laid out, there's a modern style one, which is pretty much just like the Windows 7 one except it's got a different design. It's a bit more kind of Windows 10 like. Speaking of Windows 10, we've got a Windows 10 style one. If we go ahead and select that, as you can see, we've got the Windows 10 tiles that have come back and we've got all our applications on the left here. So yeah, if you do like the Windows 10 start menu for whatever reason, then you can apply that here. But I'm personally going to use the Windows 11 one here. So yeah, this is what it looks like. So you can customize this to death and it's just brilliant. So if we go to configure menu here, you can obviously 
customize the links down here. So these are all like shortcuts basically. So I believe this is documents, downloads, music, pictures. We've got a control panel shortcut here, which is really good as well. And we've got Windows settings. So yeah, you can add and remove these. You can play around with the order of them. I personally don't really have much music on my computer. So I just remove that shortcut, but documents, downloads, pictures, personal folder will get rid of control panel settings. We'll get rid of run because we can just press Windows key R for run settings. And yeah, this is pretty much how I would normally have it. I might mess around with the layout a little bit more, but yeah, next up we can customize the menu visual appearance. So you can choose an automatic color for the start menu, which I've got on, but you can also choose your own here using this very generous color picker. You can make the menu bigger or smaller, which is really good to see. So I can make it massive and it'll pretty much just take up my entire screen. In fact, there is actually a full screen start menu, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. But right now, I'm just going to reset this and have it on 100%. Now you can adjust the transparency, which is so good. So right now it's on 94%, so it's pretty much like a solid color. But if we make this, say, hmm, I don't know, about 30%, look at that. It just looks so good. I love the translucency. It's just, oh, it's, it's lovely. It's chef's kiss. Honestly, it's brilliant. So yeah, you can play around with this. You can have it like on the lowest, which is 11. That looks like frosted glass. I really like that. You can change the visual effects on the menu. So you can round the corners of the menu, animate when opening it. You can disable that if you've got a low end PC, offset the menu from the taskbar. And yeah, just loads of visual settings and stuff that you can mess around here as well. You can even use your own images for the start menu background, which is pretty cool here. You can do that and then just select a photograph or whatever. But I personally like having it like this. This looks really good in my opinion. You can change the start button, but that's only supported if you have your taskbar on the left, aligned to the left. You can't do that on the center, which is a little bit annoying. You can also enhance your taskbar through start 11. So it doesn't just change your start menu. You can also enhance your taskbar. So if we just go ahead and turn this on here, you will need to restart Explorer and it will align it to the left for you. But yeah, you can have your task buttons actually say what it is, which is pretty good. You can have it also sometimes, or you can have it on never. Personally, I would have it on sometimes times. I don't really like it when I've got loads of different things all lined up down my taskbar. The other thing you can do is you can actually adjust the transparency of your taskbar itself. So if we go to settings here, similar to our start menu, we can actually turn down the opacity. Look at that. That looks so good. But yeah, I'll have it on about 50%. I think that looks quite good. You can show seconds on the clock as well, which I personally do. I really don't know why they took that out of Windows 11. So definitely have that on. And you can also unblur the wallpaper under your taskbar using this. So if we turn this off, oh, look at that. That looks so clean. So yeah, you can do that if you want, or you can have it blurred. It's all personal preference. There's just endless customizability with this program, and it's really good. Right, now we're going to get into start menu configuration. So I hate it when Windows suggests recently used apps to me. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn that off. We're going to turn off recent documents, and yeah, we're going to not have our pinned items synchronized anywhere else. Thank you. So yeah, if we go here, we've got pretty much a clean slate to work from. Now, the best thing we can do with Start 11 is we can actually create our own little groups. So if I want to sort out my applications into categories, I could put like, say my photos and paint into here. I can rename it. I can call it say like graphics or something like that. We can rearrange these so we can put them at the top here. Just click and drag them around. We can also create new pages as well, which is an absolute game changer. So similar to like on your phone, on your home screen, you can just scroll across to a new page here. I can move this to another page by just right clicking, create new page. And yeah, it's pretty intuitive. And once you've got loads of applications on your computer that you can sort out into categories, it is really clean. We can also right click configure start 11. And we can also go here to configure menu. And we can actually turn off the search bar because the search bar is kind of annoying because you can just type anyway in the search bar come up so we can actually turn this off so to do that just go to search here turn it off so yeah really clean start menu in fact if we just minimize that just look at how good that looks so if you want to make your icons bigger just go here to start menu configuration and you can actually make these well, extra large. So if we go here, this does look like my phone, actually. These look like phone apps here. I don't have many applications installed on this computer. So I've tried to do what I can with what I've got. So, you know, I've made like a little gaming section here, stuff, another page. So I wonder what absurd looks like. This is probably going to be really stupid. Whoa. <laughs> 
So yeah, if you're blind or something, you can do that. Or if you just like big icons, you can do that. But yeah, endless customizability with this as well. You can also turn on full screen menu here. So if I go ahead and press the start button, <laughs> it takes up my entire screen. So if you've got lots of applications, lots of categories, and you don't have the space for it in the tiny little box they give you, you can make it full screen and you can do that. You can also go to all apps here and scroll down all the apps that you have installed on your computer. And if you want to pin one of these to your start 11, just right click on it, pin to start 11. Now we've got two cameras. So yeah, we can just right click, unpin that. If you want to move something to a new page, just right click, move to next page and it'll put it on your next page basically. So yeah, it's really customizable. I really do like this. I've only found it recently and honestly, I really wish I found it sooner. Right now, I don't know about you, but I do like the Windows 11 wallpaper, but I don't really like it at night. It hurts my eyes. It's way too bright. So let's change that. So let's go to our new settings button that we've got in our nice new start menu. Thanks to start 11. We're going to go to personalization and we're going to change our colors. So by default, I think Notch OS does have dark mode enabled, which is good. Transparency effects, we're going to keep that. But we're going to make accent color automatic and we're going to change our wallpaper. Now, a lot of the wallpapers that come included in Windows 11 are pretty cool. I personally use this one for quite a while. You can use the dark version of Windows 11, but I personally like to use third party wallpapers from the internet. Ah, there we go. Much better. So if you're wondering where I got this wallpaper from, it's actually from a custom operating system called Windows 11 Ameliorated. Now, I might be doing a video on this very soon, so make sure you guys get subscribed and look out for that. But yeah, they're Windows 11 Ameliorated. They're actually responsible for making AME Wizard, which is a really good tool for custom operating systems nowadays with playbooks and stuff. But yeah, I personally ran Windows 11 Ameliorated and I really like their desktop wallpaper. So I've gone ahead and I've snatched that and I'll leave it in the description if you guys want it as well. But yeah, it just looks so clean and really, really nice. Right, now it's time to take Windows 11 to the next level. Now, the thing that I don't like about Windows 11 is, although there's a really nice redesign of it, it's not consistent across all of the applications within Windows. For example, if we have a look here at our control panel here, although the icons are changed, it's still well, not fitting with our dark mode, which we've selected in settings, but it is pretty much the exact same shell as Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP just with a, a different theme, a different border. Now, don't get me wrong, it's good. Like I can just navigate this, I know where everything is, but I just don't like how inconsistent the design is. So we're gonna fix that with something called Rectify 11. Now, Rectify 11 used to be its own custom operating system, and now it's just become its own installer. So you just run this, you can get this from their GitHub. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. So just type in Rectify 11 and it's by Misha Productions on GitHub. And yeah, it's a really, really good tool. It includes all of this stuff all in one and it's going to make our windows just look beautiful. So yeah, go ahead and grab this. I've just downloaded it myself here. So yeah, just double click on it, run it as administrator. Now you might want to make a restore point before you run this. It's not known to mess up anything, but it is recommended. Right, so then just press install now. Just press next, agree to the terms, very important. And now you can choose what you want to be rectified as they call it. So you can go for system icons, themes and extras. So I'm personally gonna go for, we'll go for the basic system icons. I don't really like to change around the system icons because I've only just got used to the Windows 11 ones, but I do like the rectify 11 ones. So we'll only go for basic with that. We're definitely gonna go for themes and for the extras, uh, we might as well get all of these as well, apart from maybe be the wallpaper. In fact, we'll keep the wallpaper. Their wallpaper is pretty good. So yeah, we're pretty much going for everything. So just press next. Select your desired theme. Now this one's very important. So we're going to go for dark with Mika or Mica. Select your desired desktop experience. I'm going to go for Windows 11 default because that's kind of what we've gone with. And we're also going to extend Mika to Explorer navigation bar. So yeah, this is my personal settings. You can obviously mess around and select what you want. Yeah, it's just a really good project and I highly recommend checking it out. Right, so once it's done, you'll need to restart your PC. I think it will do it for you. So yeah, we'll be back once it's done. All right, guys, so it has just restarted and here we are in Rectify 11. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. We've got a really nice desktop background going on here. So yeah, it looks really good here. We've got obviously our start menu. Look at how good this looks now with a darker wallpaper. Oh, I love the look of that. So now we're gonna customize Rectify 11 a little bit more. So if we go ahead and go to our control panel here, as you can 
see it's been completely rectified. Yeah, no more light mode, no more inconsistencies. It just looks really nice. And they've changed the icons as well as well. And yeah, it's just consistent. You know, we can go into options here and everything just works. And honestly, this is how Windows 11 should have been. I don't know why they were so lazy with the design. Like they must have teams of designers. Now, here comes my favorite part. Do you remember what I was talking about, about Mika for everyone or Mika or however you want to call it? Basically, it comes as a system tray icon, as you can see here, Mika for everyone. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it runs on startup, run as admin on startup as well. And this is like the magical application. This is going to transform the look of our desktop. So now we've installed Rectify 11. They do actually install an app called Rectify 11 Control Center. If you just go into all apps, you should be able to find it. And yeah, this is where you kind of customize your theme, basically. So I've gone here and I'm going to go for Rectify 11 dark theme with Mika or Mika. And then we're going to select that. We're going to click apply. And now if we go ahead and go to our file explorer, look at this. Oh, this is brilliant. So as you can see, we've got a consistent design and it's like translucent. So this is what Mica does. It pretty much just allows you to see like your desktop background kind of through it. I don't know how to explain it, but it just looks so good. Let's go ahead and apply our regular wallpaper here. Yeah, just look at how good it looks. It looks so good. Now, I'm not sure if a low end PC would be able to handle this. It probably won't. But honestly, just look at the theme. It just looks so nice. Oh, look at our start menu as well. Oh, this is just, this is brilliant. I love it. So we can also go here and this is the secure UX theme tool. This is a little bit more complicated, but we're going to basically just get rid of our cursor with this. So we're just going to click on ignore cursor like that. And we're going to go rectify 11 mica theme fixed ribbon, ignore cursor, apply. And now, as you can see, we've actually got the accent color of our wallpaper, which is pretty good. Oh, yes, this is what we want. Look at this. Oh, this looks so good. Our file explorer is actually a joy to use for once. And as you can see, we've obviously got a different highlight color as well, which you can customize, which is good. It just looks so good. And this is consistent throughout your entire operating system, which is really good. Another thing with Rectify 11 that I've noticed is they actually include gadgets. So if we go here, right click and go to gadgets, we've actually got Windows 7 style gadgets. Oh, this is brilliant. So CPU meter might be good for someone with a low end PC. If they want to kind of monitor that. That'd be good. We've got the clock here as well. We've got a piano. What? Okay, I don't have audio. Oh, wait. Yeah, we can play the piano on this Rectify 11 gadget. What? Okay. And then we've got weather as well. Battery meter if you're on a laptop. Yeah, honestly, I'm really surprised by this. I love it. Gadgets. I was pretty sad to see them go on Windows 7, but they're back in Rectify 11. Right, let's just go ahead and close out of them now. It's kind of ruining our clean look here. So the idea is don't have any applications on your desktop. Keep it just a picture. Keep it nice and clean. Maybe a couple of folders. That's it. But have all your applications in this start menu here. Organize them all into categories. Make your start menu look nice. Use Rectify 11 to make everything kind of translucent and really nice. And yeah, I think this also works with WinRAR as well. Lots of people were asking me how I got my WinRAR to be translucent. That is pretty much Rectify 11 and Mica for everyone pretty much doing that for me. Now, if you do go into your Windows personalized settings and try and change something, I do believe it messes it up, which is a little bit annoying. In fact, actually, yeah, let's try and change our cursor. So if we go to mouse settings here, mouse pointer, and then I think we can just change it. Yeah, if we go here, pointers as you can see we've got obviously a rectify 11 one let's just make it windows default like that and boom so yeah you can enjoy rectify 11 with all the customized you know menus and stuff the nice translucency and you can have the old cursor back if you prefer that and if we go ahead and have a look at that, we haven't actually done much to our background processes. Before we had about 60, I think, 63. And it's only gone up to about 75. And to be honest, for me, that is completely worth it. We've made our desktop look so much better. The design is so much more consistent. And background processes haven't really been affected too much by it. So yeah, you will have to have this Mika for Everyone program running in the background if you want the translucency and stuff. But honestly, I'm willing to make that trade-off because this just looks so good. All right. And here is the final product. So as you can see, this is my main computer running Windows 11 with all 
the tweaks that we've done in this video. I've obviously got my start 11 here. I've got all my stuff sorted into categories and stuff here, which is really good. We've got different pages and stuff as well. I've got no icons on my desktop apart from this stuff folder where I just put a load of stuff in there and that gets it out of the way. We've obviously got my Mika for everyone. So obviously my file explorer looks really clean now. We've obviously got the translucent menus and stuff as well. I believe WinRAR also has it as well. So if we just type in WinRAR here and yep, here we go. This is WinRAR. As you can see here, we've got a nice consistent theme on there as well. Oh, it just looks so good. It's so good on the eyes. Honestly, I'd highly recommend doing all the tweaks that I've said to do in this video, if you can, of course, and it will make such a difference. My computer is just a joy to use right now. And honestly, this is how Windows 11 should have been. Microsoft, you better be taking notes because the inconsistent design and all the problems we have with Windows 11, it's just fixed. It's rectified with Rectify 11. We've also got the old context menu back as well. And this is actually translucent. Look at it. It looks so good. So yeah, this is pretty much how I've customized my windows. I'll probably do an updated one very soon because honestly, I'm always customizing my windows. I'm always tweaking and messing around with it. But this is how I've got it to right now. And you're welcome to copy this and try it out for yourself. So thank you guys all for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and you found this helpful. Subscribe if you're new. And if you want to watch my video on how to make your own Windows 11 and completely de-bloat it, then click here.